So now we're going to take a look at multiple angle formulas. So if I put 2 in front of my angle, like 2 times 30, can I just pull that 2 out in front of my trig function and then just do 2 times the sine of 30? Or do I have to multiply these together and then get the sine of 60? Well, the sine of 60 we know is root 3 over 2. If I take that 2 and pull it in front, then I get 2 times the sine of 30, or 2 times 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1, which is not what I got when I worked this way. So taking this 2 out in front does not work. Similarly down here with 1 half, if I had the sine of 1 half 60, I cannot pull the 1 half in front. Sine of 60 we know is root 3 over 2 times that 1 half would be root 3 over 4 which is totally different than the sine of 30, which is 1 half. So that does not work. So if you have an angle that you're multiplying by after your trig function, you cannot just pull it in front. You can actually use your double angle formula. So if I have the sine of two angles multi or of u, sine of 2 times u, I can go 2 sine of u cosine of u. Now that really comes from your... Um, sine of two angles added because if both angles were u and you know u plus u is 2u you go sine of the first angle cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first sine of the second so we get sine times cosine here we get sine times cosine here we get one of them plus another one of them is two of them you can also use that same technique when you're looking at trying to figure out your double angle cosine and double angle tangent formulas now, double angle cosine actually has three options. Either cosine squared u minus sine squared u, or 1 minus 2 sine squared u, or 2 cosine squared u minus 1. If you plug stuff into this type up here, go cosine of u plus u, you get the first one. If you use your Pythagorean theorem identities, then you can get the second two from there. If you have half angle formulas, half of something, here are your formulas. Once again, tangent down here has three options you could use. It does not make a difference. So here we want to do the sine of 2u, cosine of 2u, and two, tangent of 2u when you're told that the sine is negative 4 over 5. Also, we're told that we are in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to draw an angle in the fourth quadrant. I know that sine is opposite, so it's negative 4 over hypotenuse, which is 5. Pythagorean theorem to get my missing side. So we draw our triangle to represent our angle because it's not one that we were supposed to have memorized. So my double angle sine is 2 sine of my angle, cosine of my angle. So I'm going to go 2 sine of u, so I go to angle u, do my sine of opposite over hypotenuse. Do my cosine. Cosine of u is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now I'm just multiplying fractions together. I multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. When I'm dealing with my double angle cosine, I actually have three formulas I could use. I could use any one of the three and it will work. However, I'm going to choose to use this one. Since we were given the sine, I'm going to use the one that only has sine. So I'll go 1 minus 2. My sine and then I have to square it. And then when I work that out, I get negative 7 over 25. Now there is a double angle formula for tangent, but since we know tangent sine over cosine, and I just figured out the sine of 2u and figured out the tangent of, or cosine of 2u, I could just go ahead and divide those two answers, and I would get my final answer. If I did want to use my double angle tangent formula, I could have. I could go 2 tangent of u, which is opposite over adjacent, 1 minus my tangent squared. So I'll do my opposite over adjacent and then squared. So I'll work out the top, work out the bottom, you get a fraction over a fraction. You still get the exact same answer. It does not make a difference. Over here, we're dealing with half angles. 
we're also dealing with an angle in the fourth quadrant. Now we're given cosecant, which I know is a reciprocal sine, so really the sine is negative 3 over 5. So I draw my angle u in the fourth quadrant. Now, we actually have to figure out where half u is. We know u is here. We need to know where half u is so that we know whether we're using the positive root or the negative root on our formulas. So to be able to go from this purple statement, which we were given, to this, I'd have to multiply all three parts by a half. Well, 0 times a half is 0. This times a half is this. So 0 to negative 45 is also in the fourth quadrant. So half u is an angle in the fourth quadrant. If I do the sine of something in the fourth quadrant, I know that that's going to be negative. So I'm going to put the negative root in front and then use my formula. So I'm going to go my negative root, 1 minus, just a second. And then I'll do the cosine of my angle. So I go to u, do my cosine. Then I have 1 minus a fraction, so I subtract that, I get a fifth. Now I'm dividing by 2, I get a tenth. Apply the root to the top and the bottom, and I get this. Then I'd also want to go ahead and do the cosine of this. But I know the cosine of half u being in the fourth quadrant would be positive. Very similar formula, but it's a plus sign instead of a minus. So 1 plus, do the cosine, which is 4 over 5. Add those together, 5 over 5 plus 4 over 5 is 9 over 5. Divide by 2 is 9 over 10. Apply the root to the top and the bottom, and then simplify that. Now when I do my half angle for my tangent, I could do sine half u over cosine half u because I just figured out the sine and the cosine. Now, I could have went ahead and worked out using one of those formulas too. It would not make a difference. So now let's look at the tangent of pi over 8. You need to ask yourself, is pi over 8 double an angle I'm used to working with, or is it half of an angle that I'm used to working with? And in this case, it's half of pi over 4. Oh, so now I have tangent of half of an angle. So I can use my half angle formula. I'm choosing to use uh, 1 minus cosine u over sine u. Because that way, my thought is I'm only dividing by one thing. It's easy to multiply by the reciprocal if needed. Here, u is my right angle of pi over 4. So now I'll go 1 minus the cosine of pi over 4, which I know is this, over the sine of pi over 4, which I know is this. So now I'm subtracting two fractions on top. So get a common denominator. Write the top as one fraction. The bottom is already one fraction. Take the top, multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom. Now these twos drop. There's two times the top, two times the bottom. I'm left with this on top and just a root two on the bottom. Not leaving, not liking to leave a root on the bottom, I'll multiply the top and bottom by root two over root two. Distribute through on the bottom and on the top, and I get this. Notice I can now take a 2 out of everything. So a 2 out of this, 2 out of this, 2 out of this puts it over 1. So I just get root 2 minus 1. So here you're asked to find the zeros of this function. Well, the zeros would be when your y value is 0. So you set it equal to 0 and then solve it. Well, we have two terms subtracted. We happen to have a common factor, so we could pull that out. We now have two things multiplied together. So the cosine could be 0, or what's in the parentheses could be 0. So you should ask yourself, when is cosine equal to 0? Well, you should know that. And notice we're only going on one revolution here around. So that is at 0 or not 0, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Top of the circle, bottom of the circle, for when cosine is 0. Now you got to get your trig function by itself. 
So you'd have to subtract 1, divide by negative 2. So you got to ask yourself, when is sine equal to 1 half? Well, that's at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So these would be your four answers that would make this a true statement.